trying to get to the car park by 5.45. It is pitch black, as you can see. <laughs> AKA, as you can't see. <laughs> and uh, so far we've got beautiful stars, so they're thinking that the rain won't come in till late morning, so we might have a little bit of a chance. Let's cross our fingers. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Tongariro Alpine Crossing, here we come. <laughs> Okay, we made it to Tongariro Alpine Crossing. It is super gloomy and we are about to be in what looks like is gonna be super, super thick fog, hopefully not rain. But right here, in that super thick fog, is Mount Doom from Lord <laughs> of the Rings. So the trail is 19.4 kilometers. I think it's about halfway where you start to go back downhill. Right now we're on the up. And it's just me, Frodo, and her, Sam. <laughs> Who am I? You're Sam. Samwise. Damn <laughs> And Frodo Baggins. We're climbing the Mount fires Doom. of Mount Doom. <laughs> Our driver is a Maori person. Mm -hmm. It's spelled M A O R I. <laughs> to us, it looks like Maori, but it is pronounced Maori. It's like a roll of the R. And they are the indigenous peoples of New Zealand. So, several hundred years ago, people from Polynesia and the islands in the South Pacific, they got on their boats, they came to New Zealand, and they claimed the land. Of course, there's been some issues since then because you have the separation between the native New Zealanders and the British colonizers. But for the most part, it seems like they're in peace. I think they still have some issues that I'm not gonna go into, but what New Zealand has done a good job of doing is keeping the traditional Maori language alive, the words, so that's why all the roads and all the cities here are really weird names to us because they're traditional. But it's really cool and he told us that First Peoples of New Zealand owned this land and he was just telling us a little bit about the history. In this area there are 14 different volcanoes, a lot of which are active. The one behind us, which you can't see, erupted in 2009. The one ahead of us, which you can't see, erupted in 2012. So really, Mount Doom is alive and well. So there are a lot of really beautiful streams up here and creek beds and water features, but our driver told us even if you have a water filtration system not to drink it because it's so packed full of sulfur. We're now in the climbing portion of the journey. And a fun fact is this is the southernmost point in the world that we've ever been. Or in New Zealand, ever been. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Ever been. Literally climbing Mount Doom. This is the best. <laughs> Whoa! Oh my gosh. Okay, you just accomplished that. What do you think? I think this is a kick-ass hike. Okay, that little tiny trail down there. That's where we just were. Way over there. Oh. You can see it. My gosh. Yeah, we've run a long way. <laughs> Come on. 
Come on, Sam. <laughs> if this isn't Lord of the Rings, I don't know what is. <sighs> wow. Hey, that's a good yeah. view of it again. I know. <laughs> oh my gosh. might be one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Yeah. We got our Mount Doom. We have our mountain views. And now it's a straight incline. But once we reach the top of that mountain, I think it's halfway. Okay, I can do that. I think that's what he said. And then the decline begins. But it's a pretty steady incline until that point. It is <laughs> steep. It's straight up. It's all the way up that mountain. It's all good. Just when you think you're to the top. Nope. Let me sit leveled out for a minute. Oh. This is legit. This is a hike. I smell the sulfur. I do too. <laughs> or else someone took a brim right in front of us. That ain't no brimstone. And then oh. I know brings so. Oh. I think this is the red crater. <laughs> it is red. <laughs> oh my. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Wow. <laughs> we made it to the red crater. We were like, oh maybe what we were just in was the red crater because it's kind of red. We found it. This is red. slope is super treacherous and our driver warned us that it's super sandy and people fall all the time. Most injuries happen here, he said. Nice. Let's avoid it. Look at that. All right, this is summer in New Zealand. <laughs> it's like maybe 10 degrees Celsius. Yeah, it's in the 50s. And there's no sun, but we're waiting here at what is supposed to be one of the most famous views on the Tongariro hike, which are the thermal pools. They're hard to see right now, but you can definitely smell them. It's windy, it's cold, but every day is unique and we just happen to get like the mystical creepy clouds. It's kind of cool.
We've been hiking for six hours now. We've gone nine and a half miles. And with every step I take, I am just confused because the man at our hostel said that there are like multi-sport events that they have here for kind of like a triathlon type thing, but with crazy events. Someone finished this trail, 19.4 kilometers, in an hour and 29 minutes. Like I don't even understand what it would take to physically do that. <laughs> um, an airplane? <laughs> okay, number one, listen to the bugs. The bugs are crazy. Number two, look at how far we just walked and we're not even close to being done. You can't describe how far the second half of this is. No, we thought the signs were wrong. They were right. Okay, so up there in the clouds is where we started. Then we walked and meandered down this entire ravine. And then we still have this entire ravine and down the mountain to go. And that's only the second half of it. <laughs> I think we've both agreed that we would have been really discouraged if we had come from this way. And there are a lot of people that are coming from this way. And to have to just walk straight up that mountain, I don't know that I would have done it. Yeah, with the side that we chose, you get in and you're like, ooh, ah, uh, from here, you would have to walk, I don't even know, five four, miles? Four or five hours before you even see, I mean, this is gorgeous, but before you see the things that you're here for, it would be a four or five hour walk. Yeah, it's way better to end with this, for sure. So what's the side that we started on? The National Park side? Manga Tupa or something. It's something like that. And we'll find out what this side is called, because that is a no-go. This is the Keti Hat. <laughs> okay. Or whatever. Yeah. The one that starts with a K is on this side. Don't start there. Okay, we started in a lava field and we're ending in a drippy rainforest. Mm -hmm. All right, we're done. Oh. And the cicadas are pissed off. Are they mad because it's raining? My Fitbit claims it is 34,000 steps, three and a half times your daily recommendation. Do you hear the bugs? We have mixed feelings. We're both really excited to say goodbye to this hike because it's painful, but this is definitely the most variety in one hike that you can on get. planet Earth. I mean, we're, we've been complaining the past few miles, but overall, this is a really awesome hike. It's long, and it's an all-day kind of thing, but it's worth it. Yeah, there's a reason why it's top 10 day hikes in the world.